It looks like a regular dreary winter day. No leaves on the trees, except for the pine trees. Everything's dead. But it's not. There are still plenty of things alive and well in the garden, like these turnips and some carrots, which I'm going to pick today. Hey guys. So it's, oh, they still glare. Sorry. Guess I'll take those off. Um, so it's uh, a really, sorry about the trucks, um, a really nice warm day at the end of December. So normally, you know, it should be like 30s, 40s, maybe chilly, but it's not. It's actually like, well, right now it's 57, but today's high was around 65. And it's actually a really, really nice day. So, we are gonna make a fire in a little bit. And we're gonna cook dinner on it because we like doing that. So, I got some Brussels sprouts today at the store because they actually look good, which they haven't looked good pretty much all year. I think it's the first time we've actually gotten fresh Brussels sprouts. Maybe next year I'll get to grow some. At some point, I will definitely grow Brussels sprouts. But as of yet, it has not happened. However, I do have some turnips and some carrots. So we're going to chop those up with the, and uh, maybe some kale. Maybe some kale too. I haven't decided yet. We're going to chop them all up, put them with the brush sprouts in a skillet over the fire. And we're going to cook that up for dinner and it's going to be delicious. First, I have my turnips. Now, I've been saving this one for a while because I'm pretty pretty happy with this one. It may not look too big to you, but it's bigger than any of the other turnips I got out of that batch of seeds, which was from Walmart and pretty terrible. So next time, I will definitely be buying seeds for turnips somewhere else. But there's that one. That's my big one. And... Uh, and there's another little guy over here, which actually looks a little bit more like a radish than a turnip. But it's obviously a turnip from the leaves, so it's okay. And then there's a couple more on the other side. But the thing I love about root vegetables is that it's such a surprise. You never know what you're going to get until you pull them out. Well, you can kind of tell from the top, you know, if, if they're big around or whatever. But you never know if they're going to like a carrot with legs or if it's gonna have a big hole in it from some bug that ate it when you weren't looking you know under the ground it's just always a surprise so I got two turnips here I think let me check the turnips on the other side and then we'll go get some carrots um, I don't think they're gonna get too much bigger than this so I'm just gonna go ahead Ooh, that one really had a root on it just gonna go ahead and pick them and this will be the last harvest of this year because this year is almost done. I'm sure I will still be harvesting kale and mustard greens, which you can see here. These are mustard greens. Nice and lightly spicy. They're not as spicy when it's cold. And I think that's because of the cold. Like Kale isn't as bitter when it's cold because the cold converts the cell structure in it. Uh, turns it into more sugar or something like that. That didn't sound very scientific, but you get the idea. They're sweeter during the winter. So, there's my turnips. See my one big pretty one. That's almost grocery store size. So I'm pretty happy with that one. And then the other ones are, you know, edible size. So, got some little tiny beets here, but they're not, not even remotely worth pulling. Got a couple radishes which are also pretty tiny, but I don't think they'll get any bigger this year. But I'll leave them in there anyway, maybe get some seed off of them. So, yeah, let's go see what kind of carrots I've got. So, ooh, you can't even see my face. So, there we go. So, this spot over here doesn't look all that pretty. It's a bit of an odd spot. But the carrots seem to actually like it, so I might do some more carrots here next year. Well, they look.
look like they like it. We'll see how they turn out. Let's see. Ooh, I've got one Parisian carrot. Aren't they cute? That one got a slit in it. It's okay though. It's fine. One Parisian carrot. Let's see what this one is. Ooh, that's a pretty one. I haven't had too many pretty carrots this year. Some are just spring planting just didn't grow good and then I didn't get any in at the right time like at the end of summer so except for these couple yeah. I think that's an Amarillo from Baker Creek that should be what that is and then let's see what else do we have anybody else we've got one two more Parisians those. Two more Parisians. Who else is hiding in here? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that's another Amarillo. It's not as big and not quite as yellow. It's definitely yellowish. And then found and gretel. These are petite finger carrots. I think just burpy seeds from Walmart and then so I've got and I've got two or three on the other side so we'll go see about those so, carrots and turnips delicious let's go over here and see what we got on this side Woohoo! so this is a cabbage which was growing perfectly fine but then got completely overrun with um, what was it? Mm, harlequin beetles. And so it just, it survived, but it was never good for eating. So I'm saving it, and I figure it might go to seed next year. So there's another Parisian. A little split at the bottom, but still very edible. Uh, what's this one over here? There's another very, <laughs> a very hairy Parisian. And one giant black nebula, which is very, <laughs> I don't even know if that's worth eating. I'll cut it up and see. They've been out here in plenty of frost, so. That ought to be sweet enough. I thought I had a cut in carrot in here somewhere, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> see that carrot? That would definitely make the ugly produce box. No. I don't even think that would make the ugly produce box. Just gonna pop all these little tails off. Goodness. That is ridiculous. There we go. I'll clean these up. And cut them all. And get a fire going. And seriously, these glasses drive me crazy. If you ever buy glasses from Fermo, don't get the baseline glasses because the lenses are so reflective. It's ridiculous. <coughs> All right, so um, I haven't used this too much recently because it was really cold at the beginning of the month. So I've got to clean it all out. that off to the side. It's a little bit damp from sitting in there. So I might take that one out. And that one's definitely very wet. So it's that one. And the kids threw these in there, which is not the best idea. And now Siri is talking to my butt. Hush Siri. All right, so I have got, sorry you can't really see my head, but I have got a whole bucket of random kindling stuff, dryer lint, paper tubes, things like that, that I like to just kind of throw stuff in there randomly. So I've got some uh, ends of paper. I just make 
good fire starters. I'll just kind of stuff it in there. Stuff some paper in there, dry paper, some dryer lint, and the ends. And put that in there. And then I've got this, which was a handle on a kettle which was not a good handle for an outdoor kettle because obviously it's very flammable. So I took that off and I put a metal handle on it instead. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, put some more paper in that one and some more lint. And that ought to be enough to get things going, hopefully. I'll just lay those on top of that. And maybe stick some paper underneath of them. It's not a real science to it. Just, you know, kind of like that. Got a box of matches. I'm going to readjust this camera so you can see me better. There, that ought to do it. So. We've got lots of twigs and branches and things. And put some over there. Get myself a match. I'm thinking about getting myself a fire starter kind of whoops that match broke in half that wasn't good so that going. Get the matches up out of the way. And, uh, you know, just kind of tie some sticks around it. Don't want to smother it. You want to make sure it gets going good. And just kind of put them in there. Make sure you have them as dry as possible, obviously. You don't want to put wet wood in because it won't burn good. It smoke a lot. There we go. It's going now. Then after I get this going good, I'm going to clean the carrots and cut some Brussels sprouts up. Put some water on. Check the kids. They all decided to take a nap on the way home. I'll flip my rack back over. Just an old oven rack from our old oven. But it works. So, 
as you can see, we roast are uh, roasting some Brussels sprouts with the turnips and carrots that I pulled up this afternoon. Um, there's also some garlic that I harvested earlier, and uh, chili pepper, and it was delicious. Um, unfortunately, we um, didn't get to do too much more recording later because all the kids woke up and they were still bit on the groggy and grumpy side. But it was it was a great evening and we all enjoyed ourselves a lot and just had a great time around the fire. Kids didn't really enjoy the vegetables, but they liked their hot dogs and marshmallows, so it all works out. And hopefully we'll be able to do it again sometime soon. Someday I'd like to have a complete outdoor kitchen, but that's a ways down the road. So for now, we'll just be enjoying this fire pit. Hopefully more and more. So I hope you guys try this. Well, not this exactly, but you know, get outside, make a fire, cook your food on the fire, even if it's just hot dogs. It's a, it's a great way to enjoy the outdoors, get some fresh air, and just kind of relax, you know. No, it's okay. dogs get too burnt because of the wine. Maybe thin. We'll see. Don't eat all of it. Do you like hot dogs? Uh -huh. You do? Uh -huh. It's hot right now. You have to wait a second. 